Again, good morning, and God bless you. This is Pastor Gary Walsh, Jr. of Destiny Church in Waldorf, Maryland. I am blessed to be the servant leader and the pastor there, and we want to thank you and welcome you for to joining us, for joining us today on this online worship experience. Um, we want you to know that we, through these tough times, through any time, are here to pray with you, to join with you. And so we want you to reach out to us uh, if you want to send in a prayer request or a praise report or a question about our church or anything like that. You can send an email to prayerbuilds at gmail.com. That's prayerbuilds, B-U-I-L-D-S, at gmail.com. All one word, prayerbuilds at gmail.com. Shoot us an email. Shoot me an email, um, prayer request, praise report, or if you have any questions about our, our ministry, uh, please do that. Send me an email, and uh, we will respond back to you as soon as possible, but we're definitely Praying at all times, we have thousands of people, more yeah, thousands of people all over the world that have connected with us, and uh, we have a prayer conference call on uh, Wednesday afternoons at 12 noon Eastern that you can join us through the same uh, link to the same link uh, that you joined us with, and you can call in to that if you need the number. It's 844-800-5000, and that's Wednesday afternoons at 12 noon Eastern, and if we are not on the line within 10, 15 minutes, that means for some reason um, we are not having a live call. But if we're not having a live call, we are praying in the spirit together, 12 noon Eastern time on Wednesday. That is our prayer time. And if you want to get a little bit more information about us, you can go to our website, uh, which is uh, www.destinychurchmd, as in Maryland, dot org, www.destinychurchmd. Dot org. You can get a little bit more information about us, about our ministry, where we're located, when we get back to our location. Uh, we have services generally on Sundays at um, 11 a.m., and we want you to come and visit with us. We're praying and praise God that you're with us right now online, um, and so we want to welcome you again. And again, you can visit us. You can get more information about us out on our website. Also, if the Lord places it on your heart to be a blessing um, through tithes and offering and giving, you can also do so on our website, on our online donations tab, which will take you right to electronic giving through Givelify. So that is also to our families and members of Destiny Church. If you want to send in your, your tithes and your offerings still, if the Lord places that on your heart, then you can go to our online donation tab on the website and do that electronically. As a matter of fact, uh, there have been some of you who have been sending in your tithes and your offering, and I want to stop right now, and let's pray and bless that, and bless you uh, in that moment, okay? Father God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, we pray that you would bless this offering, that it may be used for the upkeep of your kingdom here on earth. God, please bless the gift and the giver, O oh Lord. And Father, we're all asking, whether we had something to give or not, God, that you would expand our territory so much so that our cups run up over and we can be a blessing to somebody else. God, these are hard times, but you're a great God. And so, Father, we're praying that you would just bless us, keep us, grow us so much so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Again, God, we just want to say thank you. We love you. We honor and adore you. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Together in love, we say amen. Amen and praise God. Listen, I don't want to hold you too long today. I know that we had some te technical difficulties, and it kind of put us back a little bit. So what I want to do right now is get right into the message again. Uh, I also want to hear from you about this experience. I know we have, we have, we're growing into this. This is the second time we've done our online experience, and it is my prayer as pastor that uh, this grows. Okay, and so we're going to be doing some things uh, that, I, that I pray uh, are going to bless the ministry and bless you online and offline. Um, so be looking for information from me, but I want to hear your feedback if you have some suggestions or if you want to volunteer to help. Again, send an email to prayerbuilds at gmail.com, prayerbuilds at gmail.com. All right, are you ready for the word, the word of God? Listen, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book, to Psalms. The 30th chapter, Psalm 30, the 30th Psalm is where we'll be looking. Uh, and if you uh, 
are using a Bible, a book, I know a lot of people are electronic, and you don't know where Psalms is, you can go and understand there's a free gift in your Bible, and it's called the Table of Contents. With everything going on, free is good. Uh, so you have a free gift in every Bible called the Table of Contents. Even applications, even biblical Bible applications give you a free gift called Search. So you just type in PSA, and it will take you to Psalm. And then you look up Psalm 30. Psalm 30. Okay? And today, we're going to be looking at uh, verses 4 through 6. Verses 4 through 6 today. Uh, so Psalm 30. And here's what I want you to do. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version of Psalm 30. And I want you to, uh, if you've got it, if you're there already, I want you to yell out, I've got it. Praise God. That mean, that was, What that just did was that caused somebody else around you, somebody else outside or walking by your house or somebody that's in your house wondering what is it that you got because they want some of it too because you were so excited about it. So right now, Psalm 30, verses 4 through 6, reading from the New International Version. This is what it says, the word of the Lord. It says, sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only for a minute, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay, your Bible might say endure, for the night. But rejoicing, your Bible might say joy, comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of his holy and righteous word. Verse 5, I'm going to read that again for you. It says, for his anger lasts only a moment. That's God. But his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, anybody need any joy right now, comes in the morning. May the Lord again add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of his holy and righteous word. And I just want to put a title to this text, talk about it for the short time that is ours, How to Restore Joy in Troubled Times. How to Restore Joy in the Troubled Times. Times. I have a question for you this morning, and I want you to think about it for a second, and if you want to yell your answer out out loud, but I really want you to think about this question, but here's the question. What do you do to get your joy back when something or someone brings you down? What do you do? What, 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 what is your, your, your menu, your recipe for getting back on track, for bringing your joy back when something or someone brings you down. I mean, haven't you ever been in that type of situation where uh, something has happened to bring you down? I mean, you, you, you started off happy. You started off with joy. Things were going well, but for one reason or another, something or someone, God forbid, came along and, 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 and put something in the mix that, that made your joy go sour. Your joy went to the left, to the right, or out the door. What do you do? When your joy or when your life gets off track, when something or someone brings you down. And I've got I've to gotta share this with you. I'm not trying to be a, 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 a Debbie Downer or anything like that, but every now and then something will happen in life where we will get down, where something will steal our joy, where, where things won't be uh, A-OK -okay all the time. Every now and then we have our minds made up. We're going to do something a, a certain way. We're going to go somewhere. We're going to look a particular way. Something is going to happen the way we want it to happen. But it just doesn't happen that way. Our joy can be brought down. It happens. It happens. Matter of fact, it's happening to a whole lot of people right now. What we're going through uh, in, in this season, in this season, in this, in what we're going through with the coronavirus and things like that, people being uh told that they can't go anywhere, people being uh, not being able to, when they do go to the store, not being able to find the items that they normally would be able to find. Some people have been let go from their jobs. Some people have been sent home with no pay. Some people, watch this, are being sent home with pay, but only for a little while. There's so much uncertainty going on around in our, in our world, in our country, yea, even in somebody's home who's under the sound of my voice right now. What do you do? When, 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 when your joy, when your joy gets off track, when things bring you down. I mean, I want you for a moment. I want you for a moment. I know, I know you might be that super positive person, but I want you for just a moment to put your mind on rewind. 
Because there's somebody into the sound of my voice that it, when it was just January, yes, three months ago, January, when you said the year 2020 is going to be my year. Come on, you, you, you remember saying that? Or maybe if you didn't say it, somebody you know said it. 2020 is going to be my year. We, 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 we at Destiny Church, our, our theme was, was, was we're going to have 2020 vision, seeing, God, seeing things like God sees them. We wanted to uh, uh, imagine. We wanted to, to work on. We wanted to be blessed with 2020 spiritual vision so we could get to where God wants us to be. That's what a lot of people were saying, that 2020 is going to be my year. And here we are in March. Yes, three months into 2020, and, 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 and circumstances are out of our control. Things are not going quite like we expected them to. I mean, there are so many people who made plans for this year, and we're three months in, and we've had to scrap those plans. There's somebody, you're listening to me. You're watching me right now, and you made vacation plans. You made uh, health plans. You made uh, educational plans. You made uh, romantic or, or, or relationship plans. You made plans for this year, and already, because of what's going on, they've been thrown out. They've been thrown out. I, I know my family and I, my, my, my beautiful wife and children, we try to plan a lot of times to, to what we're going to do throughout the year because, you know, we got, we got spring break for, for the kids and we got different things for ourselves, birthdays and anniversaries and things like that. And so you make plans to do things, but now there's so much uncertainty going on that that right there could steal your joy. I'm not, I'm not trying, to, trying to make you sad. I'm just trying to speak what's real. What do you do in times like this? I have been watching uh, uh, on the news, listening and watching on the news, and, and then kind of scanning social media a little bit, and I'm watching people talk about uh, day six of being locked in, okay? Because, you know, in cer certain states and certain uh, parts of the country, uh, people have uh, – have, have been mandatory lock-ins, okay? And so for some people, it's day three, day four, day five, day six of being home, being having to stay inside, and they're already going stir-crazy. They're already uh, uh, doing things and saying things that are super negative, and i got to ask them the question, what would you do? <laughs> well, what are you going to do? What have you thought about doing to, to, restore, to restore your joy? Well, all the things that are going on right now in, in this world is enough to steal our joy. But I've got to let you know, God still wants his people to have joy. His people. Yeah, yeah, you are his people. God, who created any of us, we are all his people. And, and listen, listen, if you have not, if you're listening to me, watching me, and you've never received Jesus Christ, God's son, as your savior, I want to I want to invite you, I want to encourage you to invite him into your heart and allow him to give you the pass key, the passcode to get to Father God, to make sure that when this life is over, when this life is over, that you will be with God in heaven through Jesus Christ. But I need to let you know, regardless if you've done that yet, regardless, uh, you, you, you still got you got time today, right now, to do that, but don't let it pass you by. Because as a child of God, and yes, you are a child of God, God wants you to have joy. God, God wants you to have blessings. God, God has planned and purpose for us to have all of that. And if you want your joy restored, if you allow your joy to be to be stolen, you've got to understand that these are troubled times, but these times too will pass. Jesus said it. Jesus said it in, in, in John. He said, He said, Look, in this world, in this life, you will have trials, you will have trouble, you will have tribulations. He said, But look, I've come. Uh, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He also said, watch this, and I know I'm mixing up the scripture a little bit, but this is all, these are all the words of Jesus. He said, look, I've come that you have, might have life and you have it more abundantly, but he also said, I've overcome the world. Mm. He says, in this world you're going to have trouble, but I've overcome the world, which means if you give your life to Christ, he's already overcome that which you're going to run into. But it still happens to us as humans that our joy can be stolen, or we can put our, our joy down, we begin to think negatively when things like what's going on with us now happen. We, we, we begin to think negative. It's easy. Because, right, see, some people are saying, well, well you know, being, being at home, being uh, shut in for a little while is not so bad. It's like having uh, extended snow days. We here on the East Coast, 
uh, in past years when we've had bad storms, we have what are called snow days. For those of you on the West Coast, y'all don't know nothing about that. But but here here on the on the East Coast, when it when it snows, we have really bad winter storm. We have snow days. That means the schools are closed. A lot of the stores are on limited uh, operating hours, and basically all you can do is stay home. But see, this, to my friends, is what's going on now is worse than any snow days. I'm, and it can be worse in these snow days than any of us have ever experienced because, listen, look, right now the sun is out here in Maryland. Uh, the other day it was 80 degrees. Uh, we, 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 were, we were at home, couldn't go anywhere, couldn't do anything, but you looked outside your doors and you couldn't see any problems. But there are problems. There are troubles going on that you and I don't know about, can't see, uh, and, and we hear about, but we don't know everything. And that right there can also bring your joy down. I'll move on. But the psalmist, David. David the psalmist, who, who wrote today's scripture, Psalm, Psalm 30, verses 4 through 6, gives us an idea, gives us some recipes. Watch this. If you want to restore your joy in troubled times, and the first thing that he suggests is, if you want to rejo restore your joy in troubled times, the first thing David suggests is you have, to put, you have to put on a command performance for the Lord. He says put on a command performance. For the Lord. Where, where do you see that, Gary? Right there, verse 4. It says, Sing unto the Lord, O, o saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. It says, Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. I had just read the King James Version. The, the, the NIV version says, uh, the NIV version says, Sing praises of the Lord. You, his faithful people, praise his holy name. In other words, David is saying, Look, Regardless of what's going on around you, what should be happening within you is praise for the Lord. You see, this, this right here is David saying to us, regardless of what's happening, regardless of what's going on, regardless of your negative mindset, if you want your joy restored, the first thing you've got to do is praise the Lord. He says, put on a command performance for the Lord. He says, he says, Sing unto the Lord. And, and you know the funny thing about it is, uh, uh, I don't know about you, but for me, uh, music just makes me happy. And I, I think about that, it works the same way for a lot of people, that that, that music or, or singing makes them happy. Uh, and you can you find people can, can get upset about something, and then they'll go uh, to their, their special place, whether that be their car, their room, their, their headphones, whatever it is, and they'll put on their favorite kind of music. Uh, and, and, and get that jam on, get that groove on, you know. And uh, uh, I know my family right now is laughing at me because of, because of the little dance move I just did. But but that's what we do. We'll put on our favorite kind of music, and and, and it casts the the power of the way sometimes to make us feel better. But watch this: uh, if what we are listening to, or if what we're focused in, in on. Is, is, is not, has nothing to do with the Lord, has nothing to do with God, a lot of times that feel good is just temporary. And there are people who are doing other things right now to try to make themselves feel good in these troubling times. But, 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 but David shared with us, he said, look, if you want to restore your joy and you want your joy to remain restored, go on and sing a song of praise to God. Go on and give him some praise. Go on and tell him, thank you, Lord. I, I just want to thank you for waking me up. I don't know what tomorrow may bring, Lord, but thank you, Lord. And see, right there, you might say, well, I'm not much of a singer. See, you don't have to be much of a singer because you're not being graded or judged on how you sing. Or what you say, you're being you're you're, you're being you're, you're being uh, critiqued by God if, if you give me that word uh, for 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 what's coming out of your heart. So if you're telling God thank you for waking me up, thank you for giving me another chance, Lord. I know there's terrible things going on in this world, Lord, but you got me right now. You got our families, God. Thank you for a little food to eat, Lord. Thank you for some clothes, God. Thank you for this time, God. Thank you for just being God. And God alone. And here's why I want to point this out to you. God, God, uh, David says, David, David is sharing with us that, that, that this performance that we do needs to be for the Lord, not for ourselves or for other people. And that's one of the problems that many of us have when it comes to praising God. You see, some people, have, I've heard people say sometimes that I don't know what to, what to pray. I don't know how to praise. Do you know how to say thank you? Can you say the word thank you? Try, try right now. So, just, just say thank you. 
Now, now, now say thank you, Lord. Now, see, now somebody out there who just did that, it kind of felt like, eh, because you didn't put any heart into it. And in order to put some heart into it, you got to put your mind on a rewind and understand that God woke you up this morning. When everything was going good for you, you remember, you remember when you got that new outfit, you got that new car, you got that new job, you started that new school year, you got those new friends, you know, when you were feeling good, that was God who did it for you. And if you don't can't find anything right now to say thank you for it for right now, well, thank you for that. Because the one thing I've got to tell you is God did all that for you then. He can do it for you now, and he's promised to continue to do it for you as long as you stick with him. I don't know what you're dealing with right now. I'm dealing with some stuff on my own. Got some health stuff. I got some locket. Come on, we all got some stuff. But now is the time to come in, to give God a command performance. Because he's just that good. And one of the things I want to point out to you uh, is that, that you might notice in your Bible is that uh, when, when, when the psalmist says, when, when David says right there uh, in, in, verse, in verse 4, he says right there, sing the praises of the Lord. Now, in my Bible and in many Bibles, you'll see the Lord is all capital letters. Okay, can I teach for a second? The, the Lord, the word the Lord right there is all capital letters. And what that is sharing with us is, the, the first of all, is that the Old Testament is uh, was written in Hebrew. You, your Bible translates it in English, and it misses a lot of things. Our Bible misses a lot of things from the uh, English translation from Hebrew. But the Hebrew word that that word Lord in all capitals represents is Yahweh. Okay, Yahweh, uh, and I'm gonna do some Bible studies on that later on. You can join us with with those in the, in the, in the coming weeks. But 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 I want to give you this really quick. The Hebrew word that that is translated right there is, is Yahweh, and that word translated back in English basically means I am. Okay, so David is really saying what David is really saying. Hold on to your seats. He's saying sing sing a song of praise unto the great I am. Pastor, you just you just lost me. What do you mean, the great I am? See, see, see. When you and I are dealing with something, and you and I need stuff, and we go to God and He does it, and watch this. Even when we don't go to Him, but He still does it for us. Listen, basically, He has stepped in out of no way and made a way for you and I in our situation. And so, whatever you need, He became that. And so as the great I am, he's basically saying, I am God, and I am that which you need. And so David is saying, you need to praise the great I am because he stepped in for you when you least expected it. And so when you're looking for God to do something, when you're looking for God to make a way, he says, I am that, I can do that, and I can be all that. Put your mind on rewind. When was the last time God did something for you that you didn't expect? You, you needed a counselor, and God said, I am that. You needed a healer, and God said, I am that. You needed a doctor, and God said, I am that. Somebody needed a lawyer, and God said, I am that. You needed a banker. You needed some finances. God said, I am that. Watch this. You needed a virus vaccine. Hallelujah. God said, I am that. Whatever you stand in need of. God is the great I am, and he can be that. And so just for the mere fact that he can, he has, and he will be all of that, that's reason enough to give him a command performance of praise. Somebody needs to tell him, thank you right now. Ooh. Somebody, somebody, even in this lock in, shut in, work from home, whatever you want to call it, virus situation, somebody needed some rest. <laughs> and God is saying, I am that. I am the rest that you needed. I am the, 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 the peace that you need. I am the joy <laughs> that you need. You want to you wanna restore your joy in troubled times? <laughs> so do it. David says, listen, give a command performance for the Lord. But he also says, he also says this, I got to move on. First of all, you want to restore your joy in troubled times. You got to give a command performance for the Lord. But second of all, you got to give a comforting, you got to understand there are comforting promises from the Lord. Okay? Our first point, you got to give a command performance for the Lord. Okay? That's giving some praise. Go on and tell him thank you. And, you know, and listen, let me just, let me just uh, park here real quick. 
and go back to that one second. You don't have to, uh, giving praise to God does not require for you to, be, to do cartwheels and backflips and running around and dancing all the time. Now, if God has been that good to you, 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 you want to get your little groove on, that's cool. But watch this. Sometimes for some folk, it's just saying thank you. Lord, thank you for waking me up. Lord, thank you for my wife and children. Lord, thank you for my <coughs> reasonable help. Lord, thank you for, for, for putting me in a reasonable proximity of my right mind. Lord, thank you for just how good you are. If that's where you are with God, then that's good enough. But the more you think about how good God is, the greater your praise should be. Again, it doesn't take you jumping and backflipping and doing cartwheels, but at least say thank you. you got to put on a command performance. So sing a song within your heart to the Lord. Put on a command performance for the Lord. But secondly, understand there are comforting promises from the Lord. David, David in, in, in verse 5 of uh, Psalm 30, in verse 5 he says, for his anger lasts only for a minute, minute, but his favor lasts a lifetime. He says, uh, uh, weeping may endure for a night, but, but joy, rejoicing, comes in the morning. Understand this. The promises of God that, that David is reminding us of is the fact that his anger, number one, uh, lasts only for a moment. You see, you see, God is not a God that stays angry with us. See, see yes, now watch this. We all sin. I had to let that marinate for a second because there are some folks who are like, well, I'm all good. No, no, we all sin. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible also says that the wages of sin, in other words, the payment of sin, is death. Now, what that means is you might not physically die, but something that around you or that was supposed to come to you might die. Okay, you understand that? So, so, so really, that there are consequences, in other words, what it's saying, for, for, for our sins. When you do something uh, wrong, it's not me judging the wrong. Can I say it again? It's not me judging your wrong. It's not you judging my wrongs. It's God saying, look, what, this is wrong. So, so, so we all sin. We all do things wrong. Watch this. But, and, and God, there are consequences for when we do. God is not happy. God is not uh, pleased when we sin. But watch this. He don't stay. He doesn't stay angry with us. It says his anger lasts only for a moment because watch this. God will correct us. God will uh, do it. God will um, get us a little bit, but he does it in love. Yeah, God is not like you and I. See, human beings, we hold a grudge, but God promises to love us. And, and, and like this, even when, when he tries to, when, even when he uh, directs us in a different direction than we were going, he's doing it in love because he's basically saying, <coughs> excuse me, that the way you are going is not the way you should be going. And I need to turn you around, but he's going to turn you around in love. And watch this. So, so, so David says the promise you got to understand is his anger lasts only for a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. In other words, good or bad, God's got you. Right or wrong, God's got you. But what God is trying to do is to get you and I to get on the right track. And every now and then, some things will happen in our lives as a warning, come on somebody, to tell you you are going the right, wrong way. See, see, I, I, I shared with you all last week about my health situation. I'm not going to get too deep into it again. But I shared with you uh, on last week that my, my, my health situation that I just found out about regarding my heart was very, very serious. And even the doctors and the nurses were quite amazed at the fact that, number one, I had brought myself into the hospital, and number two, that I was still sitting up. And, and when they told me how serious things were, I, too, was, was shocked. I, too, was amazed. But then I, too, had to turn and say, Thank you, God, because all this was was a warning, come on, somebody, that I wasn't going in the right direction when it came to my health. God gave me another chance where somebody else would have came in with the same situation I had and would not have made it another day. God gave me some more time. He's given me some more time so I can get it right, but not just so I can get it right, so I can share with somebody else what God will do if you allow him to do. And, and, and listen, God allows us to get through a lot of these uh, uh, terrible situations that we're going through 
So when we get on the other side, number one, we can we can't take credit for it. Number two, we can give him the credit for it. And number three, we can tell somebody else what God will, can, and is doing in their lives. For somebody, this coronavirus lock-in, it's time for you to get locked in with God. I know I know, you got some books to catch up on. I, I know you got some movie shows, some movies and some TV shows to catch up on. I, I know there's some spring cleaning that you should have been doing for the past two years. But what about the spring cleaning of your heart? What about catching up on your Bible study? What about catching up with God? God has us has us in a space and a place right now where we should take full advantage of the time we have and spend some of it, more of it, with him. Comforting promises from the Lord. David says, for his anger lasts only for a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. Now, here's his promise number three. He says, weeping may endure, or weeping may stay around for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. <clears throat> Now can I can I can I break that down really quick? Listen, we all have some 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 dark days. We all have some some dark times. We all have some dark situations. Some of us have at times some dark lives. And watch this. What David is sharing with us is that as children of God, if we keep our hand in his hand, if we continue to, to, to focus in on the things of Jesus, that even in these dark times, even in these dark days, even with the dark life, uh, the light will shine, and it's shining from the Lord. Listen, if you would turn your heart and your mind around, stop making everything a fallout moment. Stop making everything an argument moment. Stop making everything a woe is me moment. And understand that God is in control, not you and I. He woke you up this morning, got you going on your way, not just so you could take up space, but so you can give him praise, so he can bless you, so you and I can understand that, yes, dark times will come. Might be a little darkness going on right now, but if we just stick with him, the light will shine. I want to praise God, and I want to thank God for waking me up this morning, getting me going on my way. See, last night was last night, but I'm thankful it wasn't my last night. Somebody go get that on their way home. I'm praising God right now and thanking him for my wife and my children, for, for putting a roof over our head, for, for, for some food on the table. Even though my 13-year-old might try to eat it all up, but it's all right. God will, will, will supply. He <laughs> will supply. But listen, you got to understand that whatever you consider to be dark, God will shine a light on it. And that's a reason to, to, to get your joy back. You got to have, listen, listen, you want to get your joy back in troubling times, restore your joy, you got to put on a command performance for the Lord. Put on a command performance for the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sing to him some praise. Tell him, thank you. But and it was also, also, you got to understand that there are comforting promises from the Lord. His anger lasts only for a moment. Favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Is there anybody here under the sound of my voice and you want your morning to come? You need the, the joy to shine back in your life. You might have been struggling with your relationship. You might have been struggling with your finances. You might be struggling on your job. You might be struggling with your education. You might be struggling with your friends. You might be struggling with your family. Well, whatever your struggle is, you have a Savior, and his name is Jesus Christ. He will lead you to the light, which is God. <laughs> Excuse me. You want to you restore your, your joy in troubled times. First thing you got to do is you got to put on a command performance for the Lord. The second thing you got you to gotta understand is that there are comforting promises from the Lord. And lastly, lastly, if you are willing to put on a command performance for the Lord and you understand that there are comforting promises from the Lord, <laughs> you will be able to give confident, confidence proclamation about the Lord. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Confident proclamation about the Lord. For those of you taking notes, let me go back to those points again. Command performance from the Lord, verse 4. Command comforting promises from the Lord, verse 5. Confident proclamation about the Lord, verse 6. Verse 6, David says, when I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaky. He says, look, when I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. 
if I can put those those if I can remix the order of those points and scriptures, you see, if you are confident in the Lord, if you are secure, in other words, in something, you'll go ahead and uh, shout about it. You'll go ahead and have joy about it. You'll go ahead and 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 and, and, and let somebody else know about it. You know, you 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 go ahead and if I, if you make me feel secure. Not only is it my responsibility to, to tell you thank you, to show you some gratitude, come on somebody, to, 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 to really uh, allow you to understand how thankful I am that you make me feel secure. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 That I can be confident. Uh-huh. I can, I can be confident that no matter what is going on around me, because uh, if I'm talking person to person, you got me, huh? I will tell you thank you. More often than not, even when, watch this, nothing is going on. Uh -huh. So David is saying if you want to restore your joy in troubled times, you got to understand who's in control of the trouble and the time. Uh, you, you, he says, when I felt secure, I will never be shaken. Can I remix it? And because I'm not shaken, I, and I and I know that I'm secure. In other words, God's got me. I can give Him thanks and praise. And just in case I need a little fuel to give Him thanks and praise, I can look to His promises and understand that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. I can confidently proclaim about my Lord that He has got me when I can't get myself. He is. Protected me when I can't protect myself. He has provided for me. Come on, is there anybody here that God has provided for you for when you didn't know where your next whatever it was was gonna come from? You had more months than money. You 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 people were getting on your nerves. You needed a job. You needed some help on a test. You needed some 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 strength at work. You needed some strength in your relationship. Some strength in your home. And God had you. You you were anticipating something being bad when you got home. But when you walked through that door, everything was a okay because God. God had taken care of it before you got in. You were anticipating a bad report from the doctor, but when you got there, the doctor said, I can't see nothing because God had erased it before you even got there. You were anticipating something going wrong at the bank, but when you got to the bank, they said, you know what? You don't owe us anymore. You had overpaid months ago. God took care of it. I don't know about you, but the security of the Lord will make me uh, stand up and say, I am not shaken. You can't get me, enemy. You can't get me, people. You can't have me, uh, devil, because God has got me and protected me and made me secure. You know, you know. let me give you this, this last illustration, and then I'm going to let you go. Listen, uh, uh, what we're going through now with this coronavirus is considered a, pan, a pandemic. And uh, Many of you adults and even some of you teenagers online uh, have been watching or listening, may have been watching or listening to the news and seeing how terrible uh, things are and, you know, why they are asking us to stay home and stay put. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, as an adult or as a teenager or as a young adult, you know, you're looking at different things going on. You're looking at, you know, your, 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 your bills, and you're looking at your food provisions, and you're looking at your house, and you're looking at your relationship and what's going on with different family members and what's even going on in your own house. And, you know, and so that can cause us uh, as, as human beings to, to, to sometimes worry. And we're not, as Christians, supposed to live in fear. You know, but, but sometimes, you know, it can cause you to, to look to the left or look to the right or be more concerned, let me use that word, than you normally would be, huh, as an adult or as a Teenager, but you know, it's funny. I, 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 the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to me the other day, really strong through my three-year-old son Chase. Chase Garrett Walsh is his name. A Chase, three-year-old Chase, and you know, through all of this, uh, what was going on? You know, uh, Chase ain't tripping. Chase, at three years old, uh, is not worried about anything. He is uh, having the time of his life. Chase, uh, I, I don't know if you can hear him a little bit running around. Uh, from the time he gets up at 7.45 in the morning, every day, uh, from, the, from the time he gets up, uh, from the time he goes to bed, Chase is having a ball. He is playing. He, he, he has a new lease on life. He's a, in his mind, he's like, wait a minute, I can just get up and play and have a ball. Now, Daddy is doing some work. Mama is doing some work. Brother, he's brother, my older brother, uh, Ch uh, Chancellor, is even doing some work. But I, 
I don't have any work to do, so I'm just going to play with my toys, and when I get hungry, I'm going to go to my mama or my father, and I'm going to say, Daddy, uh, uh, I want something to eat, and Daddy's going to put me in my chair and, and give me something to eat. Uh, Daddy, I, I want you to go to the bathroom. Daddy's going to point me uh, to the bathroom. Daddy, uh, I want to go watch a movie. Daddy's going to put me uh, in front of the movie. Chase is not tripping about a pandemic. And the thing about it is, the pandemic is still going on, but Chase is not worried. You see, because just like David said, Chase is secure in who's got him. He understands that as long as my father can provide, I don't have to worry about anything. Everything I need as his child, this is Chase, uh, my father can provide. Now, get this. Chase understands that there are certain times woo, that the provision will come. You can't just sit around and sit in front of the refrigerator and eat uh, everything in there. There are times to eat breakfast, Chase understands. There's time to eat some lunch. There's some time to eat dinner. There's time to take a bath. There, there, there's time to go to sleep. See, Chase understands that there are different times that, that you, you, you have to do all these things. But in any of those things that are needed, his father will provide. And so Chase is running around the house without a care in the world. He has not stopped smiling in this whole time we've been home. And I just want to tell somebody right now, God, your Heavenly Father, has got you just like that. I know you have some things on your mind. I know you might not know where the next might be coming from, but I want you to understand Keep your hand in God's hand. Go ahead and give him some praise right now. Go ahead and let your joy come back right now, and you will understand that God has got you, and when he's got you, you nothing can, can harm, nothing can take it away from you. God wants to open up the windows of heaven and, and pour you out a blessing, but you got to be in the receiving position, and to be in the receiving position right now means I want to allow my joy to come back. I'm not going to allow these things going on around me to worry me so much so that I'm, I'm going crazy. I've got a bad attitude. I'm doing the wrong things. I'm trying to, 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 to restore myself because God says, if you want your joy to be restored in troubled times, you got to be confident in who's got you. Because David says, when I feel secure, I will never be shaken. Is there anybody here who wants a childlike faith? Right now, to have it in God. Go on and tell God, thank you. Go on and tell God, I'm not going to worry, Lord. I might not be able to see it, but I know you've got it. Lord, I want to thank you. Lord, I want to praise you. Lord, right now, today, on this Sunday morning, God, I'm giving you my all. Because you gave your all to me. Listen, my friends, I pray that this message, how to restore your joy in troubled times, has blessed you. Because if you want your joy restored, you got to put on a command performance for the Lord. you got to understand their comforting promises from the Lord. And you have to have confident, confident proclamation about the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And praise God. Listen, I want to I want to thank you for joining with us this morning on this Destiny Church of Waldorf, Maryland online worship experience. I pray that something has been said, uh, you've heard or shared with you today that will bless you and invite you and want you to come back. I, I, I almost can promise you we'll be back online next week, but I also promise and, and we'll try to promise because it's out of my control some, but that we were going to work on these technical difficulties and get things a lot smoother. Again, this is Pastor Gary Walsh, Jr., of Destiny Church in Waldorf, Maryland. And listen, I want to close in a word of prayer. And if you're out there and you've never accepted Christ, uh, I want you during this prayer to ask the Lord to come into your heart. So I'm going to pray out loud, and you all pray silently, and we're going to close like this. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your way. We thank you for your will, God. And we thank you for waking us up, allowing us this opportunity to, to hear a word from you. Now, I pray, oh God, that you would speak to those who come today, God, in need of a blessing, which is all of us. But, Father, there's somebody under the sound of my voice who's never received your darling son, Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that you would, you would put what's inside them what they need. And if that's you out there and you've never accepted Christ, I want you to pray this portion of the prayer with me. Jesus, Lord, please come into my heart. Take over my life. I believe in my mind. It was saying with my mouth and out of my heart that you died on the cross, that you were buried and rose again 
for my sins. And Father, I want to be your child and be in the on my name on the road when this is all said and done. And now, God, we again want to just tell you thank you. We love you. We honor and adore you. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Together in love, we say amen, amen, and praise God. This is my friends. Again, thank you for joining with us. Share this uh, recording. Share this message with somebody else because they need a blessing too. Until next week, this is Pastor Gary Walsh, Jr., Destiny Church Waldo. We'll see you again. God bless you. Take care.